Hi, Julie here with Just Plain Fun, and today I'm going to show you how to use my SVG files that I have available for paper bead making. They're available in Etsy and on my website at jpfun.com. And when you get them, when they down, when you download them to your computer, they're going to be in zip format. They'll be zip files inside of a zip file and you're going to need to extract them all before you can use them in design space. So I have a sample here. I have already opened up my main uh, half inch folder of zip files and I'm going to open up the next one. So what you do is you just go ahead and extract it. And this one happens to be half inch to quarter inch that's 11 inches long. And I'm going to go ahead and click on extract and I'm going to replace. It looks like I've already done this one so I'll just do it again and I'm going to go ahead and change the name. I'm just going to add SVG to the end of this one because some of you may not be able to see the SVG file extension. Um, so what you're going to want to do is choose the one that seems to be related to the, S the HTML format or the type and you click on type, you look for the HTML unless you already have your computer associating SGF files with like Cricut Design Space or Inkscape or something like that because um, you don't want to click on it directly to open it you just want to extract the files so that you can get at them and I have associated my SVG files with Inkscape so I've go gone ahead and changed the name well added SVG to it so that way I can see it when I need to get to it so I'm going to minimize those and here I am in design space and I want to go over to the canvas area click on that okay and from here I am going to go upload the file which is over here on on the left side of the screen and I've already done this a number of times the problem we're having with these files is they have this black bar and what this black bar is it's um, copyright information and, and it says paper bead crafts on it, but you can't see it. It's black and it also interferes with being able to cut your file, your, your strips. So I'll show you how to get rid of that. So we're going to upload the image that I just got ready to do. So you click on browse and that's not the one I'm going to go do the one that I just opened up, which is this one. I'm going to choose this SVG file, double click on that, and then it's going to tell you the uploaded SVG contained the following items that are not supported. Pattern fills. Import anyway. Well, I'm going to click on continue. And then you're going to see the black bar, which is what you should expect until I can upload updated versions of this. Uh, this is what I have for now. Okay, so we're going to upload this. You can put tags in if you want. I'm not going to bother. And then as on this next page, you're going to hover over what we just imported, which is this four, uh, quarter inch, half inch to quarter inch. We're going to click on that and we're going to go over here on the lower right corner and we're going to add to canvas. Now it's going to show up tiny on the screen because this was designed with Pazzle's InView software not Inkscape so it's going to be end up being tiny and this going to be is going to end up being needing to be approximately eight inches wide so I'm going to put 8.25 because I think that's where it's going to be but I'm going to check how to verify and then I want it to be 10.5 inches long because design space wants a quarter inch margin all the way around your paper okay so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do to verify that my wide end here or here is half inch, I'm just going to bring match it up with the, with the um, ruler up here. And it's really, really close. I could add just a tiny bit more if I wanted it to. Yeah, because it's a little off. So let's go 30. Okay, does that make any difference? Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's pretty close. It's not 100% accurate. And I'm hoping that future ones, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to position it at 0.25 and 0.25.
that way it matches what Design Space wants. Okay, so to get rid of the black box, this is what you're going to do um, before you save it. See up here in this upper right corner, you've got group that's faded out, ungroup, duplicate, and delete. Well, you're going to choose the ungroup, so you click on that, and basically what, does, what that does is it releases everything so that each piece is its own little drawing. See that? There's one there, there's one there, etc. So what you're going to do carefully, you're going to go down to the black box, try not to hit one of the one of these lines here. You're going to click on the black box and isolate only the little black box. And then on your computer's keyboard, you should have this for Windows and Mac or Apple, click delete. That's it for that. Then in order to be able to group everything back together, you're going to, on my computer, which is a Windows, I'm going to choose Control A to select all. On the Mac or Apple, it's probably Command A or Command, so I don't know. Anyway, you guys do know, but that's, anyway. So you're going to group it again. Very important. Okay, before you continue, you're going to want to make sure that when you send it to the cutter, create space, create space? No, design space doesn't put these pieces where they think it's going to fit best. You want it to fit best the way it shows. So in order to be able to do that, because it's selected, you're going to go down to the lower right corner and choose attach. And that makes everything stick together, not just grouped, but stuck together so they can't come apart. And then at this point, before you even go to make it, you're going to save your file. And with me, because this is the half inch by quarter inch by 11 inch, I'm going to do a half inch by quarter inch by 11 inch. And this makes a barrel type of bead, barrel paper bead strip. Okay. And then I'm going to save it in my paper bead strips collection and then save. I could save it in my half inch strips as well for better organizing, but I can do that later on. All right. So now it's ready to go to the cutter itself and I'm going to turn mine on, even though I'm not going to cut, I think I got to do this in order for it to go to me and do what it's got to do there. So that's that. All right. So the next step is to go up to make it, which is in the upper right corner, as you probably already know. And see how it's black? I don't want that. I want to be able to see my lines. So I'm going to go back and give it some color. All right. So what you're going to do here is you're going to select all again, and you're going to go up to this area right here, upper left corner or so. And you're going to click on operation. It says basic cut because that's what you want. You want basic cut, but then you want to change this black box to a color and I'm going to do light blue and that's it. That's, and then you can hit collect uh, control save or commit, save it to your computer again. So it's saved. So that way, when you next time you load it up from my projects, it'll be blue or whatever color you chose. Then go to make it. And there it is. It's in blue, but we have it on a mat, which is fine. This is the way I want it, but the paper's wrong size. So you want to change that to the paper size that you have. Now it's showing me that I can do nine by 12. I'd rather have an eight and a half by 11. But honestly, this will fit anyway. So click on nine by 12. And if you look carefully, you know, it will fit on your eight and a half by 11 because it goes to eight and a half. And if you click out off, it's actually inside of the eight and a half. So it will actually fit on your paper and cut correctly. If you want to fix that, so it's even better. You can by just going back into design space and on un, you know uh, ungrouping it and just shorten this top top cut here you can re you know just shorten it 
and then that way maybe the eight and a half by 11 will show up. But this is basically how you use my files that I created in Pazzles and View software, which I'm no longer using. All right, and then you can go ahead and click on continue and then cut your paper into these strips. And that's basically it. That's what I wanted to show you in a nutshell. I'm gonna cancel because I'm not gonna actually cut. Don't need to be a waste of paper. I already tested other files to make sure I knew what I was talking about, knew what I was doing, and knew what to tell you. So that's that. Um, go check out jpfun.com for other paper bead related stuff. And you're gonna see crochet and sewing related stuff there too. So just go ahead and look around, see if you like anything. Um, there's lots of paper bead sheets. There's strips. Some are free. Some are free. Most are not. Um, membership is free. If you become a registered member, you can download them with um, points um, or pay money for some of them. $1.99, I think, is what I'm charging for each file. But on Etsy, you can get bundles and bundles at a fair price. Um, it ends up saving you money in the long run because each individual file would be in, in a bundle and it's definitely cheaper per template. All right, so until next time, thank you for watching and have a great day. Goodbye.